Well, we all know the old uh, industry that gave us, gave us a lot of uh, products and uh, nutritions that we need to, for medicines, but also for plastics. The only problem is that it gives us a lot of pollution and we have to pay for our waste. That is, as an economist, uh, too bad that it really cost us, but also a loss of material and loss of nutrients that we uh, lose. That causes the plastic ocean. The bio industry so far is gives us high quality meat, but it gives us uh, also a lot of pollution and a loss of nutrients that is in the manure. So I would like to welcome you today to the 21st century in which we, companies really work together, together with research centers and together with governments. We do that by creating the bio-based economy plus vertical uh, farming on open water to realize a sustainable food safety health for 9 billion people in 2050. But we have to start today for that. Now, the bio-based economy is not already accepted and mm, fairly uh, debated about. Um, what you do is you actually you get the, the um, residue from the, the bio-based, uh, from the um, farms, from the uh, intensified uh, livestock uh, industry, but also nowadays the seaweed culture. You can use that as an energy source, and in our biomass production plants, we have realized uh, extra uh, uh, r r rendement of uh, the wet residue, so that we actually get the nutrients out of it. We also get, as a residue, fuel bricks that can be used in our uh, energy source, and last but not least, even processed water is being used for the um, irrigation. But the beauty is also that from the products that you saw on the left side, you can also use that as bi in the bio-refinery and make the most beautiful products, like even cars that can be biodegradable and the other plastics, but also the medicines that can be used what you do, actually, is um, like in the uh, petrochemical industry, you try to use as less as uh, uh, inputs as possible and yet get the highest product yield. So then you get the medicines, you find uh, chemicals for the car industry, of course. Then you get downgraded to energy, the biomass. Now, what we did was to create, this is a concept, this is not the model, because we are a small and medium enterprise working together with a lot of companies to create the Corporation Deep Arctic Water Project. Um, but I, uh, I can't pay all the solicitors' costs to keep them fr framing our inf uh, getting the infringement costs. Um, this is what it looks like to have six layers of food production facility all add into one. You make it such so large that it's one square kilometer, that's 100 acres. In that, you combine the uh, horticulture together with the livestock industry, together with the uh, macro and micro algaes. One is for food, and the other one is for the future um, energy supply. It's not there yet, but we are giving the research center the possibility to have that space and room research center actually inside of our uh, uh, structure. And down uh, on the bottom, you will see the fish farming. The fish farming at this moment, as already mentioned this week, uh, are uh, uh, creating a lot of pollution. In our structure, it's semi-closed. It's on the bottom very uh, uh, closed, but only for the horticulture and the livestock it is uh, semi-open so that the uh, fresh air can come in. We also lose multiple uh, energy sources. I'm going to get there uh, soon. What is the, benef the benefit of it? Well, we have um, the feature, of course, 100 hectares in which one industry's output is going to be the input of the others because the seaweed can be used as food for the uh, livestock uh, compared to, uh, and also after the biomass, we get the nutrition out of it for the vegetables and the flowers. Uh, it's an integrated supply chain, companies working hard together. They also finance it themselves. That's new. Um, but the credit crisis made us sure that banks are saying no to us. What we did is found in Asia, for in, uh, most often, the uh, commitment of the local government, and they are paying 20% of the total costs. It is a ship, so we do have the opportunity to um, 
get to choose the fiscal policy, and that's a very good thing for entrepreneurs. And we've got three types of structures. One laying in lakes, that's embedded in the soil. The second one is um, uh, near shore uh, and uh, near uh, rivers. That means it needs a docking system that we've uh, come across. And the last but not least, the one structure that's 24 square kilometer tested is going to be uh, on open water. The benefits, lower opportunity cost of land. It's very expensive to have in Shanghai uh, one acre of farmland. It's highly polluted, so it's also not really uh, uh, good. It's uh, lower uh, logistical costs, and we also use less water, and we can produce our own water. There are no costs for waste disposal because we are using virtually everything it's not 100% cradle to cradle, but as near as possible as we can. And the beauty is that, indeed, uh, due to the diffuse light, we increase, actually, the biodiversity under the structure, as we are being told. Um, the energy source that we are using is, for one, for the future, we're going to use algaes uh, for about 20 to 30 percent hopefully in the future for our energy supply but at this moment solar energy is going to uh, contribute 20 uh, 12 to 15 percent but the major is the biomass energy plant that we have is it uh, science fiction no in the netherlands it isn't because in the netherlands we have been working in greenhouse structures not uh, as you can see on the left well on the screens is a bit, a bit difficult we are not growing most of our uh, vegetables on soil we are using stone wool to uh, so we don't use soil anymore the we've been um, testing open semi open semi closed and closed structures uh, and therefore we cre created high yield crops low costs and low emissions, but also a low uh, um, irrigation system, so we don't need water that much. We build it, our structure, modular builds, to prevent contamination and different layers. Well, and then the algaes, of course, we've seen it all today. Um, it's being realized since two years in the Netherlands. Um, and in the Netherlands, you can see on the Floriade, all the other subs, and the good thing, the floating greenhouse structure is going to be built within one year in Rotterdam. Intensified livestock farming is already implemented. It only costs 10 kilograms of food to produce one kilogram of uh, meat. So actually, Europe, we need to change to insects also. And we um, made our construction flexible enough to have inside uh, already the farm ready for insect farming. It's delicious. I tried it myself in Asia a couple of times. Um, but it uses, uh, for 10 kilograms of food for the insects, you get nine kilograms of insect food out of it. Uh, very nutritious. So a fact is we have, due to the high performance material, still oil-based, sorry for that, uh, and our special design created uh, a structure that withstands even hurricanes uh, and ships um, colliding into it. No contamination and a high field yield due to what I already explained. Do we know everything? No, sorry, I'm human, so I do make mistakes. Uh, we've tested it, uh, tested it with the highest uh, precision, but we need actually your input as scientists. In the Netherlands, we are cooperating with a lot of scientists. Please, we also need the UK, Norway, and everybody else visiting from the United States and South Korea. Uh, science fact is that the world population will increase to 9 billion uh, people, and we cannot feed them with the food levels of 2012 that we're producing at this moment. The, the food prices will increase in the whole world, even in some countries triple before 2020. We in Europe have enough fresh water, but it isn't in the rest of the world. The one thing that we discussed with other uh, um, delegates today is that Generation I, Y is uh, the, the, the uh, Facebook generation. We are opening up for discussions. We share knowledge. Please do that with us. Um, this is how the distribution of uh, food is now for China. Um, why has Asia a problem? The desert increases, urbanization, so the neglect of uh, of soil land. After 20 years, it is uh, loss of its nutrients by not farming it well enough is, is increasing. 
uh, the, the pollution of the farmland due to the coal mines and the uh, dust that is coming on to it, the surface water, no recycling, virtually no recycling, and the new generation is highly educated, for instance, in South Korea, doesn't want to work in such a low uh, uh, innovative uh, um, uh, industry like the agricultural, so they really need to do that because they need to boost uh, information, uh, innovation over there. So we strongly advise the United Nations to increase the world regulations on pollution. Please um, um, increase the local development of vertical intensive farming near metropoles. Please do tests on farm products on toxins. And of course, um, we can export our knowledge uh, and make a lot of money out of it too. Um, what we did is we are part of the bio-based delta. You said, see the logo on the uh, right. They looked for enough bio-base, they uh, also found enough uh, companies uh, working together. And you see Shell, uh, Cargill, Dow Chemical, all the uh, pharmaceutical industries, um, the local government working together, and very important, as I described earlier this week, that uh, the small and medium companies contribute also to knowledge. Not only the science uh, comes from university, but also from the small and medium enterprises, but they need to be protected, not only with only showing a concept instead of the real model that we really wanted to show you today, but we can't. Um, so um, working together, they did it by saying no subsidiary to uh, m m multinationals if they are not cooperating with at least eight companies, eight small and medium enterprises, that's how you start to, co to communicate with each other. So the fact is, are you ready for the 21st century? And if you are, then please come and visit us next week to the secret culture uh, uh, farming in the, ne in the Netherlands. Thank you very much. Thank you.